My name is Serena. Hi, my name is Oliver. Hi, I'm Isabel. Hi, I'm Jackie. Hi, I'm Tanner. Hi, I'm Lina. So, what is the NORA project? The NORA project is a project that helps raise the awareness of some, some conditions that kids have. And it also helps share each other's stories. It shows that no one is normal. And it teaches us to treat everyone with kindness. This is Christopher's story! Christopher is a fun kid that is always outside, and super energetic, and he always has a smile on his face. And overall, he's pretty cool. So Christopher is a wonderful, happy, joyful, 10 year old fourth grade boy. Um, you know, I would say just about everything makes him happy. He loves just having fun, whether that means going outside, um, you know, playing at our house with his dog, um, you know, watching some favorite shows on TV. It's all the real simple things that, that keep him happy and make him happy. Um, Christopher is a really energetic, loving, very kind little boy who always wants to be outside and is always smiling and is always happy. Well, for Christopher, I think it's very charming. Um, he's a very smart person, and he's so lovable and just so much fun to be with. And I think he's cute. kids like Chris when they grow up, they're maybe not going to go to college and they may not get a regular job like most people. They It might look different for them and so we already need to have those conversations about, listen, what is school going to be like now for them? What is it going to be like maybe in 10 years? And then what else is going to happen for him as far as, um, you know, him being able to be independent, take care of himself, um, and also for us to get to a point where we say, listen, um, mom and dad may not always be able to take care of you, and so what will it look like when that Chris is a free adult, and what will his life be? Chris for faces is that he has autism spectrum disorder, which makes it hard for him to communicate or do physical activities like we can do. One challenge is. Um, Christopher has is he's nonverbal, so that means he can't talk. And he, one thing that he uses to communicate with other people is to be, is that he uses a iPad that has all these random things of words, uh, like what he likes, um, what his favorite songs, and what he wants to say. And he uses it to so talk with other people and say funny things or listen to some music and uh, yeah. challenge that Christopher faces is that he has trouble communicating. He overcomes this challenge because he has this iPad now that he can go on this app and he presses something and then his parents hear what he wants or what he needs, then it's easier for them to get it. And he also uses gestures like hand motions or, um, or finger gestures to tell what he wants. Yeah. Who's there? Who's there? Who's there? Alright, which one do you want to pick? Chris, look, which one do you want to pick? Abbott. Abbott. Abbott, Abbott who? Abbott who? Abbott who? Abbott time you answered the door. <laughs> <laughs> Abbott time you answered the door. 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 Abbott time you answered the it's a nice thing, slowly but surely, I think he's being able to, you know, um, be independent and, um, you know, so for me, that I think that's what you know, all kind of falls in, that you're able to take care of yourself, you know. Um, we've really, the iPad is pretty new as far as how he's been able to communicate. 
Um, most of his life, it's really just been us understanding what he's trying to tell us or go for, or if he's trying to gesture, you know, he has learned to like point at things. Sometimes he'll point at things he wants, sometimes he'll point to himself, like I want that kind of a thing. So that's a pretty simple one. Like following us around with bacon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've learned that even though some people are my different feet. inside, they're actually a really great person. So even though they may look different or act different, they are actually just the same as any of us. And if you ever forget how much you really mean to me, every day I will. Push you. So he's, he's funny. He teases us a lot, um, and I think he makes us better people. He's, you know, made me a better mom, a better human, and uh, I think brought our whole family a lot closer together. You can't count on me like one, two, three, I'll be there. One thing that I've learned from Christopher is to always be kind, caring, and empathetic towards one another, and also that just because somebody looks or acts different than you doesn't mean that they really are any different. know that I think there is a normal and I think that sometimes being different is it's okay and it can be fun um, and it's still something sometimes people will say to us well he's not normal and we're like that's okay we're not asking him to be um, you know I think there's days where all of us are a little bit different and that's a good thing I think that there is no normal if everybody was normal then the world would be a very boring place and everybody is different in their own unique way. So, they, so there is no normal because each person isn't the same as the other. For me, normal doesn't really mean anything because nobody's actually normal. Because I am different from somebody else and somebody else is different from me. But that doesn't mean we're abnormal. It means we're just different because that's how we're made. I close my eyes and I can see a world that's waiting up for me that I call my own. I think being a good friend is being somebody who, um, whatever, whatever the circumstances, is always going to be there to help you, support you, listen to you. I think that being a good friend means that you respect anybody no matter what they look like, even if they are different from you because everybody's different. It also means that you that you play with them and you are nice to them no matter how they act. For me, being a good friend means always being there for someone and always being kind. Most important, for being a good friend, it means to be loyal and be trustworthy and always have that person's back. So I think it's really good to share each other's stories because we can learn from each other and we can celebrate those stories and instead of it being something to be embarrassed or to be isolated or to be alone that there's strength in just sharing that and helping each other. The reason why we should share each other's stories is because we get to know the person better and we know their differences. They can say we've lost our minds I don't care, I don't care if they call us crazy Run away to a world that we... 
It's important to share others' stories because it lets you know where they came from, why they act that way, and overall, it just lets you get to know them better than you already did. For the world we're gonna make However big, however small Let me be part of it all Share your dreams with me You may be right, you may be wrong But say that you're bringing me along To the world you see To the world I close my eyes